Hello everyone, it's me. I'm going to show you today how I achieved this effect on this drawer front. It's got raised stenciling and paint and glaze and a copper effect on the top. But before we start that, um, here is the drawer I'm going to be working on. And it had layers and layers of varnish and polish and dirt. So to prepare it, I used this rotary, rotary sander with an 80 grit disc on it and very, very carefully sanded. Now, you have to be careful when you're doing pieces of furniture like this because they're not solid wood. They're, it's plywood with a very thin veneer of wood on the top and it really is thin and if you go hell for leather, it will just go right through it and which would have been fine in this case because I'm going to be putting all sorts of stuff on. But if I was going to be staining this, um, I would have to be very careful. And also, if I was staining it, I would go up in grade on the sandpaper, because although this is clean now, it, is, it does feel quite rough. Um, so I would have gone up to, the, to 120 um, grit sandpaper very, very carefully. And that you'd, you'll feel straight away after you've done that the difference it feels quite smooth and then if you feel you need to go higher you could go to a 220 but I'm not doing that today because I'm going to be doing first of all a raised stencil using this stencil and I'm using drywall compound um, which I use all the time I have used other things but um, I'm used to this and I like it so I buy this in huge tubs and then put it out onto a plate. You have to make sure that you mix the water in really well because it does tend to rise to the top. Um, you need it quite thick so that it doesn't seep underneath the stencil. This is also known as spackle, mud, joint compound, polyfiller, all different names, plaster. Um, also manufacturers are making their own modeling paste or molding paste again which I've used and which is fine but I'm using this today so you also need something to apply it and I've got this nifty shaped spatula knife um, which is great for smearing you could also use something like that which is an artist palette knife if you haven't got anything like that you just need something that's sturdy with a flat surface and an old credit card will do it or your kitchen spatula. So I have already done the first pass on this drawer front here because I wanted this to dry and now I'm going to show you how you carry on with it. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way Okay, right, so I've done one go with the stencil and this is now dry. So the next thing I do is line it up by crossing over the last line that I did of squares and I also want to make sure that it it is lining up on the bottom so that everything is straight. Okay. Now, if you're not comfortable about just holding it in place, you can use one of those sprays that is like a quick release, but I'm not going to use that. So you pick up some of the compound. I've got it in place there. It doesn't matter if I pass over what I've already done and you just smear it over the top, making sure that you fill in all the holes. It's fun. It's actually fun. I love doing this. I think it's because it's messy. Okay, looking good. Um, we're going to go right over the holes where the hardware goes because we'll be able to find those afterwards. So don't worry about trying to be picky about that. 
find them by poking the hardware from the other side, from the screw from the other side. Okay, I'll show you how easy it is to do with the credit card. Same thing. Okay, so that's all covered. And you immediately lift it off. And ta -da! And got some overlap there that I can take off. I don't know if I've got any on the front. No, it's clean. So now I'm going to move to the other side. Again, lay the stencil over the marks from the last lot. Line it up. I'll use the credit card this time. It's very quick. You don't have to be fussy with it because what we're going to do when it's dry is we're going to lightly sand it. So if you get any peaks and lumps and sharp bits, which you will, we're going to get rid of all those. So there you have it. That is the whole drawer front now covered with my drywall compound and I'm going to leave this to dry. I can speed up the process by using a hair dryer. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to dry it off and then come back and show you the next step. Okay, it is completely dry now and so it's very very rough and we don't want that. So I'm going to sand it very lightly using a 120 grit sandpaper and just knock off all the rough edges Now, the paint I'm using today is a general finishes paint. You can use any paint you like. This is the fairly new chalk style paint and the colour is Rembrandt Red, which is just beautiful to me. I'm going to use an old chip brush because you don't want to use your best brushes to do this. Painting on top of drywall won't do them any good. So, I'm just going to go straight over the top now, making sure I get everything covered around all the little raised bits too. A good tip for these uh, chip brushes I used to get maybe a couple of goes out of them. I'm not very good at remembering to wash my brushes, I have to admit. But I read somewhere that if you put them in an old pillowcase and put them in the washing machine on a hot cycle, it works magic, and it really does. 
they come out really soft and clean and uh, yeah they're lasting much longer I know they're only cheap but I was getting through them at a rate of knots I love this color um, now when this is dry I'm going to put a glaze over the top um, a pitch, it's called pitch black glaze and because this is a chalk style paint it's very very porous so if I put a glaze over this it'll drink it all up and um, it'll do it in a quite random fashion and I won't be able to manipulate it at all so when this is dry before I do that I'm going to put a top coat on the varnish and it means that when I put the glaze over the top of that I'll be able to move it around a lot easier um, which you'll see in the next bit so I'm going to carry on doing this and then dry this and then I'll come back to you to show you the next part okay this is now dry um, it's only had one coat of paint. It's an amazing coverage, actually, this chalk style paint that they have, or chalk something paint. What's it called? Chalk style. Um, I've also given it one coat of varnish. Um, you didn't need to see me do that, but this is what I used. It's another general finish product. They're all water-based products, so it makes cleanup great. Um, one coat of flat-out flat varnish on top. And next I'm going to do a pitch black glaze over the top. Now, as I said before, um, if you don't varnish these chalk base paints, they are extremely porous and um, you won't be able to manipulate the glaze. So I'm just gonna stir this up. Amazing stuff this. Now, what we're going to do is apply the glaze and then immediately wipe it back. It looks a bit scary when it first goes on because it's so black. I hope you can see this. And work in sections. Okay. And an old t-shirt. And immediately you can see it's really changed the color of the red it's made it look really like I don't know it looks like old red leather to me if you if you want it darker you can obviously you just you can just keep going over the top shifting it along which is quite useful as well and again you can use an extender with this glaze um, which I've got here it's the base yes. extender and it, and it extends the drying time it keeps it open longer but I'm working fast enough here that I, I don't feel I need to use that. If you want to work in bigger areas, if you were doing a, a bigger piece, you would use that. And then it stays open longer. That means you can work it longer. Okay, fine. random which is good yeah so I'll let that dry and if I'm not ha happy with parts of it I can go back over it um, so I'll let that dry now and then come back and do the final two stages right 
black glaze is now dry so I'm ready to do some copper pearl effects over the top. This is also general finishes. You can't read it because I actually dropped this can all over the hall rug. Managed to scrape most of it up. Um, right, before you use anything like that, always make sure you stir it really well because all the goodness is in the bottom of the can. So, what I'm going to do here, what I'm aim aiming for, is just to very lightly touch the tops of the raised parts with this copper effect. Um, now, if I was to try and do that over the top, it would go in between. So here's the tip. You put the stencil back over the raised parts so that only they are showing and the underneath part is covered by the stencil. Don't need a lot of copper on here. And then just almost using your brush horizontal, just go back and forth like that. You don't want it to look completely painterly. That's a word, I think it is. So it's just catching the tops. And then when the light catches that, it'll add another dimension to the draw fronts. Okay, that's how it works. I'll carry on doing that. There you go, that's it. So here's the original one I showed you. And now we have this one too. So the hardware was really horrible and black. Um, so I've, I took it off obviously and then used um, a gold wax. It's a gil gold gilting wax I think it's called. There's lots of them on the market. Um, it's quite durable. I have actually top coated this as well and I did over the over the hardware and it's not going anywhere. So once that's dry now, that's the painting part finished. When it's dry I will give it a coat of, um, oh I see a little blip there that I, that I can take off. I can use some water to get that off. Um, I will put another top coat of flat out flat varnish on top of this and then I will put the hardware on and then it's finished. So that's it. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Bye.